Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back here with Kendra Wilson. Excited to have her back. Here's the owner of her own company, and she's a hypnotherapist. It's called New Heights Hypnosis from Denver, Colorado. Welcome, Kendra, back to the show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jill. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for asking, and a pleasure to have you here. And it's KendraHypnosis.com, correct? That's how we can reach you? Kendra's Hypnosis.com. That's correct. Perfect. Thank you. And we have a special guest today. Would you mind introducing Jordan to us? Absolutely. This is my friend, Jordan Euclid. He owns a key investment as well as Entangled Podcast. And we go to the same university. We're getting our master's degree together and we kind of met in a really cool serendipitous way. So welcome, Jordan. Hi, Jordan. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Jill. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Kendra, thanks so much for the invite. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, as Kendra mentioned, um, I'm one of the founders of uh, Key Investment Partners. We are a venture capital firm that focuses on cannabis-related investments. Um, so that is you know, my day job. And then uh, in my spare time, um, I started a podcast about a year and a half ago called Entangled. The uh, thesis of it is exploring the science of consciousness, the true nature of reality, and what it means to be a spiritual being having a human experience. Um, so yeah, you know, it's kind of along the, the journey started a master's program with Kendra and, you know, given the, our mutual interests in, uh, the nature of spirituality, the nature of consciousness, we've just become very good friends and excited to be here. Now, how did you actually meet? What's the story behind it? I know we believe in serendipity. So explain this. I want to hear the story. Yeah, absolutely. So Jordan and I have very like minds and we tend to be kind of more of the rebels of like pushing the boundaries within the nature of consciousness and really going beyond transcending the limitations, even in a consciousness and human potential program, we're still kind of pushing those boundaries outward. And so we really connected during our webinars because our program is all online. So nobody really knows where anybody's at in the world. We just see each other's faces and we like what we're saying. And Jordan kind of messaged me and was like, Hey, we should connect in person. You know, here's my number. Like, let's, let's try to connect. So I sent him a text and I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm in Denver. I'm on mountain time. Let's what's this time work for you. And he's like, dude, I'm in Denver too. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So we ended up hanging out and, you know, Jordan's explored some of the spiritual work that I've talked about in previous shows and as well as a lot of my hypnosis sessions and past life regressions. And we've really just kind of connected. I've been on on Jordan's podcast as well. There's uh, an episode coming out Monday. Do you want to talk about your little your uh, mini series that you're doing? Jordan? Sure. Yeah. So uh, as Kendra mentioned, you know, we're in the same master's program. Um, the program is uh, in Maharishi Vedic Science. And so the whole um, body of knowledge that it comes from, it's derived from the ancient Vedic knowledge of India. So it's it's very old knowledge and, you know, it's fundamentally based in the philosophy that our universe and the human physiology, uh, consciousness is fundamental to both. Um, and then when you apply modern day quantum physics, modern day neuroscience into that paradigm, as opposed to our Western materialist paradigm, starts to starts to solve some pretty profound mysteries of the universe right so it's it's a really cool juxtaposition of both the very ancient with the very cutting edge um and so yeah so the mini series that uh kendra was kind enough to participate in is all focused around that body of knowledge we were fortunate enough to have four of uh, the various professors that are in our program talk about their areas of expertise as well as kendra and a uh, and a doctoral candidate so it was really fun awesome congratulations this is exciting uh wow and Jordan, where what is your podcast site in case anybody listening wants to tune into your podcast and listen to this mini series? Yeah, absolutely. So the podcast is called Entangled, E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E-D. It's available on all the major uh, podcast you know, platforms, up Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. And then my main uh, my main hosting site is entangledpodcast.substack.com. The Apology of Socrates. Is this you? That's it. You got it. <laughs> I clicked on the link. Hey, awesome. Look at all these shows. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what is your inspiration behind this? I mean, just tell me more about you personally, because we don't know you yet. Would you mind just giving totally. us a little of your background to have you start the Entangled podcast like this? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I grew up very much uh, in the kind of scientific materialist paradigm, right? You know, it wasn't a believer in in God or, you know, necessarily any type of like spiritual plane of existence. You know, but I very much was 
taught at a young age, you know, this is science and science says, you know, there is no such thing as the divine, et cetera, et cetera, that these two ideas are somehow antithetical to one another. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was always very interested in in fantasy and fiction and stuff like that. Right? I loved like the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter growing up. So I, I think, you know, my spirit was still called to the idea of the supernatural, even if intellectually I couldn't necessarily cross that barrier. Um, and then about two years ago, I was introduced to a documentary um, by a guy named Dr. Stephen Greer, uh, who was actually a former transcendental meditation teacher back in like the 80s. Uh, and it was all about uh, actually around the extraterrestrial phenomenon, but it tied in some of these metaphysical concepts that we're now learning about, about, you know, the idea of the holographic universe, about consciousness being fundamental. And, you know, when I saw that documentary, just it really clicked in me. Like it, it just kind of all my intuition, my third eye chakra was really ringing that, you know, I didn't even know what that meant at the time. Right. But I was like, this this is truth with this man saying, um, you know, and I'd, I'd uh, fortunately, Denver is a very um, psychedelic friendly city. Right. And so I'd had some experiments with those substances. And, and so even though this documentary didn't talk about psychedelics at all, right, it, it resonated with a lot of experiences that I'd had previously. Um, and so about two weeks after that, you know, first time seeing the documentary, I decided to take a high dose of LSD, really explore consciousness and had that kind of breakthrough ego dissolution that, you know, I, I, I experienced the fact that everything is love, that death is just a construct, that, you know, there is a higher purpose, right? And so it really helped to validate a lot of these theories that I'd been introduced to. And, you know, I've just been really two feet down the rabbit hole ever since. Awesome. We're excited. All right. And uh, Kendra, just for new listeners today, uh, maybe you haven't uh, been aware of our podcast in the past yet. Just tell us more about you and the work you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's also, again, how Jordan and I connected with regard to death not really existing. So I, I'm a hypnotist. I do a lot of spiritual work. I have intuitive gifts so I can read people with permission. I do soul retrieval work where I journey for an individual using, and I don't use psychedelics. <laughs> it's fun. Jordan and I kind of have that balance where I, I'm, I'm reaching that state with, with just expanding my consciousness with meditation and, and drumming and different methods. It's, it's a lot of fun to connect in that way with Jordan, especially hearing his experiences and then being able to get there without psychedelics. Um, so I do, I do a lot of shamanic healing work. I do, hypnotherapy, past life regression. And, and what is shamanic healing? Would you mind just elaborating? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So that is where basically how I explained in the last show is that everything is energy. Energy carries frequency and all frequency. Energy is frequency and all frequency carries information. And I can see that information. It's very easy for me intuitively. And then when I close my eyes and go into a deep meditative state and slow my brain waves down, it's easy for me to see that information. So I'm just basically I'm just retrieving information is the scientific way to explain it. And if I want to go out there and stretch myself, then what I do in a soul retrieval session, a shamanic soul retrieval session would be to clear somebody energetically head to toe, their field, their energy field, and then make space to bring back soul parts that were maybe left in moments of trauma in the past, which help the individual to feel more whole. And again, I don't have a magic fix all button by any means, but if somebody has more tools in their toolbox, they feel more whole and they're doing the work on themselves actively. Everybody who knows me at this point knows I am in love with Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations. I healed my own life that way. I was bedridden and homeless. And now I'm the complete opposite. I do what I want. I eat what I want. I'm abundant. I'm living my best life. And his meditations were largely what helped me get there. So I think that everybody should have some sort of meditation practice, whether it's transcendental meditation, like our university teaches, or, you know, again, I'm always going to lean towards Dr. Joe Dispenza's, but when someone does the work every day to maintain that wholeness, then their life, your life just comes to you. You don't have to, to stretch yourself to get to reach for anything because your heart is a measurable magnet. And when you focus on opening your heart, the result, the side effect is the health, the healing, the abundance, the love, you know, the friendships, the bonds, all those things come to you rather than trying to force your way through time and space in this 3d limited human world of the senses. When, you know, we study essentially quantum physics and neuroscience, which is what our program is, you know, heavily 
focused on. And in that space of quantum physics and neuroscience, marrying those two together, it really allows you to expand beyond the limited world of the senses, which is less than 1% of reality that we're experiencing. And when you can tap into that resource and, and connect your mind and your heart, you know, the, the world comes to you, I, everything you could ever dream of. And it's not about manifesting money or trying hard for love or whatever it is you might want the healing. I had terminal illness, incurable illness, a metastatic lymph node in my neck. I mean, I don't have any of those things and I didn't do chemo. I didn't have surgery. It just went away, you know, and I have the labs and stuff from that. And I'm happy to post them on my, on my new heights hypnosis page. If anybody wants to see that proof and evidence, but it's, wow. it just, it comes to you. <laughs> A fascinating story. All you've been through and how you've not only survived, but you thrived. And now you're sharing this with others. Jordan, aren't you so proud of your friend? <laughs> so proud. Absolutely. It's been an amazing journey for her. And, you know, she's come so far just in the you know year and a half that I've known her. So I'm really proud of her. Oh my gosh, me too. (laughs) Oh my goodness. So this is part of the quantum coaching, right? This is what you're training to do. Some people might say, well, what is quantum coaching exactly? Could you just share in details the difference? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't really get on board with a lot of typical coaches. I think the old strategies are just not very new or innovative. I use theories from quantum physics in everything that I do in life because it's it's what's happening. It's it's the living, breathing entity within us and all around us. And so when we can get beyond the world of the senses and get into that field, the quantum field, and create our lives and draw it to us rather than forcing it, then it's more successful. It might not be pretty. You know, I'm never going to promise somebody an easy journey. I My journey was messy. It was ugly. I got worse before I got better. I got broker before I started making more money. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty, but you just, it really is a journey of, of that faith of, I can't see the unified field, but I can feel it in my heart and I'm seeing little things improve in my life. So I'm going to keep going every day. And, you know, I, I have an application process because I won't work with somebody who's not willing to do the work. I want to make sure they're not wasting their money or any of our time, because it's really important that people are willing to show up 100% for themselves. It's, it's a big journey. And if you want to dive into that world and heal your life in a way that you draw it to you, all of those old patterns are going to rise to the surface and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Sometimes it might not, but you you know, I have a, a client who I've worked with since January and friend, and he was not in a good place. And, and now he's, he's thriving, you know, things are happening and it starts within, he's like, I'm so happy and in love with life all the time. And he's doing the Dr. Joe meditations as well. And just following my guidance and his whole life is turning around. And it, it starts like that, you know, you just start to find out how happy you are all the time. And then, and then the healing comes and then the money comes. I mean, it took me six or eight months before I you know, I I got a really great contract and started making really good money and not doing very much work at all in my life, you know, so that I can focus on the greater whole and being a good mother to my six-year-old daughter and, you know, being a good friend and, and so on. So, you know, that first thing that people typically notice is I'm so in love with life. And when you look at their life, you might not understand how, because it still might be really hard. They still might have debt and all these challenges, but you know, even that changed for me, I had $20,000 in debt and a car that I couldn't afford. And then all of a sudden I get a giant bank transfer and I'm out of debt and I refinance my car. And, you know, it really is that easy when you open your heart, it really, it comes to you. And I think you've experienced that with psychedelics, just seeing that there is no separation. We're under the illusion that there's separation between Mm -hmm. everything. But when you are focusing in a quantum way, you start to understand. And again, Joe Dispenza does a great job teaching this. I'm always going to remind people to read his books because I'm, I'm not reinventing the wheel and trying to do what he does by any means, but I'm happy to coach people to dive into their own heart and I'm never going to try to sell somebody something. I've told people, you don't need me. Go read his books, do the meditations and heal your life. But if you feel like you want to pick up some pieces and have soul retrieval work or utilize my intuitive gifts so that I can see where you're getting in your own way, if you can't quite see it, as I've done in previous shows for complete strangers who are like, yes, that resonates 
or, you know, do a past life regression because we do carry junk because we're not separate. There is no time and space. We leave this lifetime, we forget, and we come into this lifetime Mm -hmm. and we're carrying junk with us. So, you know, I've healed a lot of my own symptoms where I had days where I should have gone to the ER and instead I'm creating my own recording of a past life regression. And by the end of it, I threw my inhalers away and I started running again. And it's like, okay, I don't, you know, and I'm not going to encourage that for other people. I'm never going to say throw out your medication, but I remembered who I was. I know who I am. And that's all it is. It's a remembering process to know that we are these unlimited divine creators. Beautifully said. All right, guys. Wow. We still got eight minutes left in the show. What else did you guys want to touch upon? Awesome. God, Jordan, if there's anything you want to dive into. Yeah. I mean, I think the part that she brings up about surrendering is really important, right? Because we live in this, this like society where we're taught that, you know, you have to control everything, right? You have to live this life according to these set of principles, right? And that, you know, you have to be married by X age, have X number of kids by X age, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. If you're not falling into that, you know, pathway, it starts to, I think, cause people a lot of anxiety or a lot of depression, which, you know, at the end of the day, I think are are essentially the same thing, right? It's just all people getting caught up in these neural pathways and going, you know, over and over and over and over and again, and never really uh, opening themselves up to what the universe has to offer. And I think that, you know, the more that you could just surrender, uh, go within and accept that the universe is going to give you what, um, what yeah. it's meant to do right and like and not try to put a label on things right as good or bad right but rather it's just you know what 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 you need to experience what your soul needs as part of your journey at that point in time because i think i know kendra and i would both agree with this statement i think most people who have you know overcome great hardship would say the same is that you know in hindsight those darkest moments what you know what what's referred to as the dark night of the soul that's that's the opportunity for change right that's the opportunity to really look with within and the hardest moments in my life have led to the best outcomes because it's it's helped me to recognize that we are fields of infinite possibility that we are co-creators of our reality that all these self-limiting beliefs are just that they're self-imposed and they're bullshit no exactly I would agree. You know, I would know if I could go back and take away the disease, the poverty, I wouldn't because they led to the greatest awakening. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing better now at 37 years old than I've ever been in my entire wow. life. I'm a happy single mom. I'm not trying to force anything. I love my life. And, you know, my six year old, she does Joe Dispenza's kid meditations and she's done some coherence healings with him. And She'll even say she was, she's on the episode that Jordan had me on that drops on Monday, right? Mm -hmm. Is her name Sophia. And she, one of her little moments, you know, when you open your consciousness, you start to receive information in such a beautiful way. And one day, just out of the blue, she's like, mom, I can hear things when my brain and my heart talk, Mm. you know, when I can connect my brain and my heart that I'm hearing. Cause I'm like, where do you, she'll come up with these really wise things. I'll say something and she'll be like, well, mom change is good because that's how we get better. And, you know, in the middle of a move or something, and you know, she's just so beyond her years. I know that we are infinite and that she's been around the universe for many, many experiences. And she holds that wisdom with her. And I think that's such a beautiful message for people. And that's what, you know, Dr. Joe teaches. That's what I encourage. Just open your heart, connect your, your brain and your heart, because when you can create that coherence, you know, we, we really are unlimited. I mean, if you would have told me two years ago that I'd be training for marathons and, you know, uh, abundant having, you know, being debt free and being happier than I've ever been in my life, exactly the way I am. I wouldn't have believed it, (laughs) but now I'm it's the only way, you know, and and we, we truly can create anything. Jill, are you familiar with the heart math Institute? I've heard of the HeartMath Institute. Yes. I actually spoke to someone a few years ago about that. Refresh my memory. Yeah. So it's really cool stuff that they're working on, but basically, right. We kind of have this antiquated idea of consciousness just being in the brain, right. And you're all your thoughts being in the brain, but in fact, They've been doing a lot of research and they found that your heart has more neurons than your brain and your heart communicates back and forth. It's a two way street. And so, you know, it can sound a little hippy dippy for people who don't don't believe in this kind of stuff. But it's like but what she's saying is like the importance of creating that coherence and, and not just thinking with your logical, rational mind, but also opening up to your intuitive, emotional mind and getting those two in coherence. That's when the real magic can happen. 
Oh my goodness. That's fascinating. It just makes me think off topic, but you've heard of people who had heart transplants, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, like that kid is now, or that adult is craving McDonald's and the person who had the heart before that passed would love McDonald's. Like there's <laughs> yeah. something like something transfers with the heart. I mean, there's proof and evidence like that too, right? Totally. Exactly. And I really love, I'm so grateful you're here, Jordan, because Jordan has such a beautiful way of articulating scientifically what I'm explaining that might be a little bit abstract for people or a little Mm -hmm. like woo woo, but he's like, no, here's the science. This is what it is. It's real. And I just, Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, you guys are great. Um, So in closing today, if we want to reach out to you, uh, find out more about the podcast. So you, the one you just did drops when? On Monday. And is it every Monday there's new episodes? Not every Monday, but for the mini series, it's been every Monday. Okay, awesome. And tell us the website again, Entangled. What is it? Entangledpodcast.substack.com. Awesome. And if we want to reach out to you, is that the best way? Yeah, either through the website or uh, my email, jordan at entangledpodcast.com. Awesome. And what about you, sweetheart? How can we find you and work with you? Kendra's hypnosis.com. I'm also on Facebook. My business name is new heights hypnosis and I'm also on Instagram. Oh my gosh. And how did you want to leave off for today? Any last words for us? Jordan, I feel like you've got something Mm. beautiful brewing in there. I'm always, (laughs) I'm always going to encourage people, you know, whatever you think you want in the world, whether it's material or not, the answer to get there is to open your heart and surrender that idea of what you think it should be and open your heart. And the result is those beautiful things will come to you. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Pleasure having you here. Looking forward to the next time we get to connect. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.